Hello, welcome to video six. It's, it was scheduled to be the last video in a six part mini series, but there's going to be a previously unadvertised seventh video. Uh, I've got a, a, I've just got a list of stuff we're going to do. So um, there'll be a, there'll be a bonus there. Um, hopefully you've watched the other five videos in the series. If you haven't, go back through the playlist. Uh, if you like this video, so, uh, thumbs up. If you're thinking, you know, I want to keep watching, subscribe. In the link to the um, in, sorry, in the description, there's links to all the various places you might want to talk to us or find out about us or come and meet us even. So um, if you're just looking at this video one off on a video uh, on, on YouTube thinking, who the hell is this guy on YouTube? Then you know, I'm, I'm a landlord. I own forthelandlords.com. We're a letting agency and we aim to make um, li uh, lives for, for landlords uh, easier, make them more money and give them less, less hassle and uh, give them their time back. So. I think I've covered everything there. Uh, on to uh, the main meat and potatoes of today's videos. Um, video. I um, think this is um, probably going to be the, the, the favourite for, for most landlords. It's kind of like the one. It, it's the culmination. There's a reason we've left it till last. Yeah, this is the sixth in five videos. Uh, so five videos preceding it. It's a six out of six. And there's, there's a reason for that. This is how... I view it, this is how I know it works best. We're talking about making sure that you collect the most amount of money. Um, and I don't mean in a greedy way, I just mean what's due to you. And you make buy to let profitable. Um, I see that we've got this, this process, this system, and it's three lines of defense, that's the first three videos. Then it's the rental relationship, it's looking after the property and then collecting the rent. They are the six that management six focuses. We've got three before, three afterwards. Um, I know that um, you know, that process. If something's coming through this end, each process has got a filter, and the filter is getting progressively smaller and smaller. And you know, there's, there's problems in in uh, in buy to let for sure. And as they go through the process, the problems that feed through to you as the landlord get smaller and smaller as they go through those finer and finer filters. And the reason we put collecting rent at the end is because by the time it gets to there, we know that if you follow that process, um, you, you get full, fewer and fewer problems at this end and you collect the most amount. Make a big play and I, I, a, a song and a dance, and I talk about it all the time, you know, three or four times a week, I'm in front of some people saying, this, yeah, do it right. And this is the vindication. This is the bit where um, I know it works. You, know, you, know, you do all those things and it's hard work and it's effort. Uh, it's easier to do it in a shoddy way, honestly. You know, it just is. Um, but if you do it right all the way through um, and it's more effort, it will cost you more time and money. And if you employ an agent, it will cost you some money to do that. But it's the reason we can confidently say that with a letting agency versus a good letting agency versus a bad letting agency or doing it yourself, you're going to end up with more money at the end because everything's going to be right. Not only are you going to end up with more money, but you're going to end up with less hassle because it's all sorted throughout those filters. And you're going to get all your time back because it's paying for itself, but you know, the agents pay paying for themselves. And they've got more money through there. So actually you're better off in the end, but they're doing all the work. So you know, that's a bit of a pitch. Go to the link, come and see us. <laughs> Employers of the letting agency, blah, blah, blah. But what I'm really talking about here is, um, you know, the, the, the theory, the practice, um, I want you to be able to write this down and actually get on and do it. Whether you use us as a company or not, uh, you know, the, the more happy landlords there are out there, uh, the better. I, I'm always, you know, it's the tortoise and the hare um, it's the kind of thing, isn't it? You know, do things properly and you'll end up winning in the end. Um, less haste, more speed, as my granddad would say. Getting paid is the number one focus for more for most landlords, uh, for any land, for any sensible landlord, isn't it? Um, if you're doing everything right, it should just be easy. Um, so we have in our business dozens and dozens of KPIs, our key performance indicators, from you know how how many viewings have we done, how long is it taking to rent a house, uh, how many maintenance jobs are outstanding. Oh, actually, I, I've opened up a deal sheet and I'll, I'll, I'll show you. How, how long the average tenant turns to take. Yeah, there are hundreds of KPIs. Um, nobody's got too many to track, but there's, there's people in the business, everybody sat in the seat, they're doing these things. But our flagship KPI, the thing that we're probably the most proud of, is our arrears rate. Now, um, why are we the most proud of that? It's the, it's the one that's most easily understandable. We can shout about it. It's, it's all those things why it gets talked about the most. But why are we the most proud of it? 
is because it's not just one, it's, it's one person's job to collect that rent for sure. She does a great job. Um, but it's all those other people in front of her in those parts of the process that make the job easier because of that filtering through. So, um, yeah, it's like the vindication. It's the, it, 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 it's the conclusion of our process. It's the proof that it works. It's also because it's so damn low. You know, uh, our arrears rate is under 1%. That's for uh, getting close to a 1,000 tenancies. Um, we have an over 100% collection rate, which, uh, how, how do you do that? Um, we regularly have landlords that come to see us. They bring their arrears in. And uh, a few weeks or months later, those arrears are gone. The money's back in the landlord's pocket. So on our system, you look at it, that they weren't our arrears. We weren't managing it at that point. We've had more money in than the rent's due. So that, there was a, it was a couple of years ago when that went over the 100% thing. So um, in fact, here's an offer. If you've, got, if you've got a portfolio like that, if you have arrears, we pick up the phone, go to the link in the description, come and see us, uh, let us let us have a go at getting those arrears back. We're really, really good at it. Uh, and then we'll set things right and we'll start managing the portfolio on the right foot from uh, from that point onwards. Um, it's worth pointing out though, you know, I'm saying it's everything's easy and it is, and it, and, and, and it is that way, um, but it's not easy. You know, There are still things that happen day to day in the accounts department that are not easy and they need managing and dealing with as you'd expect there are less problems and they're less severe because of that pipeline of of um, filtration you know the problems going through but let's not forget things are still going to go wrong and you need to know how um, uh, how to deal with them when it happens as you'd expect we've got a process so i just want to outline what the process is it's um it's quite simple it's the application of it that uh, produces those magic results. Um, I've watched it in progress and I, I've seen it work and it's, well, it's outstanding actually. It's a bit, bit jaw dropping occasionally. It's like, I, I can't believe we just did that. The, the, those, that. That situation that seemed out of control just got under control and I've seen it happen time and time again. So it's not a fluke. Um, the first part of, the, back, uh, of the, uh, the job is something that's remarkably simple. We check the bank daily. And you'd be amazed the amount of letting agencies that don't do that, you know. Um, we actually check the bank. I, I think it happens about three or four times a second. It's got one of those things on the bank fee that just automatically checks. I've seen letting agencies that, it sounds like a good idea. They check it once a month, you know. All the, mo all the money comes in on the first of the month. They, they hire in a bookkeeper. They check it for those three days, make sure it's all in. And they leave an arrears list on the desk and somebody's going to chase that. So no, no, we check the bank every single day. Why? If somebody hasn't paid the rent, when do you want to call them? Tomorrow? Day after? Week after? You call them now. Like, now. Second thing is, when you're calling them, and this applies to all of these steps in the process, what are you saying? You call them for a chat? A bit of an explanation about what's going on? Or you just call them, I noticed you didn't pay the rent today. Can Have you got your long card number? Can we take the rent, please? Oh, must be a mistake. You're always asking for the rent. We're not just asking for a chat or listen from some excuses. Well, listen, you know, I'm, come on to the, we're not heartless. You know, and um, we're not unrealistic as well. But really importantly, check to see if there's some arrears. Do something about it in a timely manner. So daily. And always be asking for the rent if, you know, if things might have changed. So the first part of the process is to check the rent daily. If the tenant hasn't paid the rent, there is an irreversible process we go down until the point when they change, they pay the rent. Um, these calls, letters, emails, they happen and we're always not harassing, just politely. Can we please have our rent? Simple as that. Um, so within seven days of non-payment, we will have contacted the tenant at least seven times. There's usually more because there's more ways to contact tenants these days, you know, WhatsApp, texts, letters. You know, all sorts of different ways, emails, official notices. Um, we find text messages is prob probably, I think I've read somewhere that a text message deliver deliverability and readability is in the high 90%. So text, message text messages work really well. Um, if a tenant, we haven't got in touch with a tenant within those seven days, the very last contact will be a knock at the door, just check in. You know, sometimes it's quicker than that. We've got a round, obviously, you know, maybe somebody's there on the third day just because they're there. But within the seventh day, if we haven't got hold of somebody, they might have left, we need to check that. On the seventh day, if no payment and all those steps have gone through, we are issue what's called a notice of intention. And it simply says, it's a bit serious, you know, um, it's not super scary, but it just says, 
we want you to contact us. We want you to pay the rent. If you don't, we will be issuing notice to quit, uh, whatever form that comes in, 21 days from now. That's it. So between the seventh day and the 21st day, there's other things that go on, a few other letters, other contacts, and hopefully we get in front of the, uh, uh, or speak to the tenant, and we ask for the rent, and hopefully it gets paid. If for any reason it doesn't, on that 28th day, seven plus 21 equals 28, and it's a reason there's 28, one calendar month, we're always capping the arrears at no more than one calendar month, and we've got a deposit, so, and rents in, sorry, yeah, rents in um, advance. So, yeah, there's some money to cover there. We're really limiting the damage. But if that tenant hasn't paid by that time, we serve notice. Now, it could be a section 21. It kind of works when it's a 21 in 21, 21 days, 20, section 21. It's kind of like a thing we remember, but sometimes it can be a section eight. Sometimes, um, you know, middle of COVID, um, it can't actually happen exactly like that, but still, we do it just to put the marker down and, and keep all those things in. Um, and on we go. What we don't do is at any of those stages deviate. We might hear on the 14th day that they're going to pay next Friday and they might pay next Friday, but we will still be serving that notice of intention and the section 21 if it is that at the right time. And hopefully in two weeks time they can um, they pay and we can rescind notices. A bit, a bit more complicated to rescind section 21s, but you know, we, can, we can do it. It's better to have the money in the bank and they've gone through all the rigmarole. Because I, I believe that by serving that section 21, you've actually got a greater chance of getting the money on that day. You know, maybe I've, I've seen it time and time again. I've, we've seen it with other landlords who have been told a story, but you put them through our system and it's it's quite a lot more complicated than you know, these three or four touch points I'm outlining. There's quite a lot more to it than that. You. As a, as, a, as a landlord self-managing, you've got to be careful you don't harass the tenant. That's totally, it's legal to get in trouble for it. Um, and we definitely don't do that. Uh, all throughout these, the checks and balances, you know, we're taking the pulse of the tenant, you know, rental relationship, uh, not literally, not like, like that, like the rental relationship. <laughs> I'm not checking they're alive. Um, the, 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 we're, we're, we're making sure that they're okay, signposting them to various places where they could get advice and help if needed. So we're not completely, it sounds pretty dr draconian, our system when we lay it out like that, but there's some fluffy stuff around the, around the side of it. Um, we don't want to be heartless about these things and sometimes people just can't pay, you know, and then they need some help and hopefully we can be there to, to help as much. It's not our job to help, but you know, um, hopefully we can put you in the right place to get some help if that's what's needed. Don't let me sound like a complete heartless git. Um, we just need to have made sure we've exhausted all, all, all possibilities. Like I say, if a tenant really can't pay, then it might be kind of time that we have to um, serve, serve notice and, and, and send them over to get, get possession. And at that point, we pass our uh, landlord, or if it's one of my properties, one of our, my own properties, then it goes to um, two other specialists, basically. And they're, they're not what I'm saying is they're outsourced. We, we are not solicitors or debt collectors. No, no letting agency is going to specialise in those. They're not going to do a good job of those things. And actually, you need that put to one side so it's done properly. All of those costs are claimable. When we send things over to a debt collector, I believe they charge 7%, but they charge their fees back. When we send possession out, they charge their fees back. So really, put it in the hands of the professionals, they've got a great system, and um, a letting agency actually these days isn't allowed to go and self-represent at a, um, or represent at a, at a court anyway. So you need that professional um, input. The solicitors that we use, they had input in the, all the documents and notices, the AST and all the notices all the way through, and they're all loaded into our system. So we're able to do more than most letting agencies by serving and sending out the notices, and that saves costs on the landlord's part. But when it comes to actually getting possession, you need to pass it to the professionals. We use two, like I say. One is possession, and one is the money, the arrears, the debt collection. Do them independently and separately. One of them might work and one of them might fail, or but you know both might work. Um, I believe that doing them both separately, then um, they can they can happen quicker. Even if one fails, it never fail fails. It can keep going. It's just a matter of whether you want to keep going. But let's say you got possession but didn't get the money, uh, you can keep going after the money. If you put them both together and get accelerated possession, if one fails, they both fail, and you haven't even got possession. So separate them out. That's a that's a top tip. Definitely, we, we did that. We started that like a decade ago, and it definitely definitely works. And I do believe that putting the pressure on the money brings the everything else into line now um 
I, I, so something I've I, I made a note to, to sort of mention this, and I think it's important. So I pulled up our deal sheet, and uh, a little challenge to any uh, any landlords or would be landlords, call up our accounts department any time. I can see right now on our deal sheet we've got nine thousand and fifty seven pounds worth of arrears. I'll say it again, nine thousand and fifty seven pounds arrears. That's a KPI that somebody tracks in the business, and it's on my deal sheet, and I can see it every Thursday. Um, you can call the business any time and ask what the arrears are. I don't know any other letting agency that one would know the figure and two would be proud to talk about it. Nine thousand pounds to put that in the context. We've got nearly a thousand tenancies. Um, we buy lettings businesses, and I've bought lettings businesses with a, a, a fifth of the book we've got and um, four times the arrears, five times the arrears. So yeah. what we do works, and that process is really special. So, um, like I say, it's, it does feel like a it's not all we're talking about you can't take it in isolation you've got to have those five things that's what makes it so easy so if you want that kind of system for yourself like i say go to the video description click on discovery at for the landlords.com send us an email to discovery at for the landlords.com or it's also a web address for the landlords.com forward slash discovery and you'll get to the page where you can book that come and see us see uh, see how we do it get all your questions asked I was going to say that goodbye for now, and that's the end of the mini series. But I'm going to do another one at the end of this. There'll be, a, a, like I say, a seventh bonus one. So stay tuned for that. If you subscribe, it'll be into your inbox there. Bye for now.